So I wanted to remind us, you know, the book of Isaiah reads like this in uh, chapter 55, verse 8 and 9. It says, for my thoughts uh, are not your thoughts. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. My ways are higher than your ways. In its content, it's, it's like God versus man. We think this much, but God thinks like this. It says, doesn't it, that his thoughts are higher than the heavens. So we look at heaven now in our natural and it's just like, wow, that's huge. But it's so much bigger. You can't put God in a little box like we do. He's so much bigger. And this week we've been reminded of the ways of God that, you know, sometimes you're, you're thrown off guard and you get shocked and, and everything comes at you. But it's like, at the end of the day, God's got it in control. At the end of the day, he's at the, the end before we are. And it's a Romans 8, 28, it works out good. But while we're in it, it's hard slog sometimes. Oh, why am I going through this? What's happening? Does God really love me? For as the heavens are as higher as the earth, so are God's ways. They're not like ours. He thinks completely different than man. You know, we've been involved this week in an incredible God's ways being higher than our ways. In an incredible journey of how God just supernaturally came in like a flood and turned a tragedy round to be a triumph for him. And that's what it's all about. Everything we do and go through is to bring him glory. The Bible reads in 2 Corinthians 12. Now, now I'm reading from the Passion. Oops, yes, the Passion Translation. And it's talking about Paul. And Paul's talking about grace because he's been through some things. And he's voicing it out. And he says this, he says... But he answered me, my grace is always enough for you. Always. And my power finds it, its full expression through your weakness. So I will celebrate my weakness. For when I am weak, I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. So I'm not defeated by my weakness, but delighted. For when I feel my weakness and endure mistreatment, when I'm surrounded with troubles on every side and face persecution because of my love for Christ, I am made yet stronger, for my weakness becomes a portal of God's power. So the word portal there, it means it, it brings a space it, it's, it's a new dimension. Paul's saying here, he says, God's grace is more than enough and that his power makes perfect Paul in his weakness. Because when we are weak, only he can be strong enough to carry us through our weakness. Paul declares that he will boast in his weakness and be content in his suffering because when Paul is weak, Clearly, the power of God takes over and brings him into a new dimension. The word portal is like a doorway. It brings us into a new dimension. It's a gate. It's another entrance. And you know, I know when we've been at the end of our tether. There's an old word, tether. It brings us to that place where we can only be dependent upon him. And as we depend on him with everything we've got, he breaks through into a new dimension, a new season, some of us call it. You know, this week we was involved, as you know, with this young man's funeral, an unexpected death, 26 years old. And the medication that he was on had built up in his system. I don't know all the medical terms, wouldn't have a clue, but all I know is that no one was prepared. And yet God was there before we ever got there. And he accidentally passed away. And you know how he fell asleep? He was laying like this on his bed. Passed 
thought it was a sign of contentment. He had found, in the last six months of his journey, he had found Christ in a new way. And he was all excited. Everything within him was excited. And when we went to visit his parents on the fridge, there was his six months goals. Ridden out, one, two, three, four. He had it all planned out. Bought a new ute, did it up so that when he come to Buna, that was his plan, come to Buna to be discipled. And he'd come to our house, he'd stayed a few times and he was sharing with us, <laughs> slept in our bedroom, not our bedroom, but a bedroom, and was sharing with us all his plans that he felt the Lord had given him. You never know, church, what's around the corner. But we have to have a sure foundation and a confidence in Christ and Christ alone. God had brought him to a new place, and yet little did anyone know he was going to go to a better place. Yeah? A better place. A, a doorway was going to be open to him in a new way. But doorways are open to us through our trials and tragedies that we go through in life. Because we come deeper and we come closer to God. Because I tell you, medication is not working all the time. Sometimes it might be. But after speaking to people this week, with this in mind of this young man, the stories have been phenomenal at what people have gone through. Because of certain medications. So here we are, going now, this week, to do a young man's funeral, who we'd known since he was about two. He used to run ragged around the church. <laughs> Everybody used to, oh. There used to be a big stage, bigger than this, where we used to have church. And this day, Dennis is up there preaching, and all of a sudden, this little face popped out. And this other little face popped out, and it was him and his brother. And start doing this rigmarole on the stage while Dennis was preaching. And he, he you know, he was, they both were just so fun-loving. And, yeah, Dennis used to take them to school and pick them up and take them to the movies, and that was their memory. Their memory was, Andrew's memory was, I want to come to Fassifern to sit under Pastor Dennis and, because he had this memory that he was a good guy. So we'd reconnected, and he wanted to be a disciple. And so... When we got news, it was like, oh, one minute he's in your house, the next minute you're at a table with his parents talking about certain things. But God just comes in like a flood. Like his mother, his mother wanted to do his reading, and she was saying, I don't think I can, but I want to. And we were like, well, the peace of God will be your portion to do that, to bring closure to you. Trust in his strength. Because when you're weak, he will be strong. He takes over. The Holy Spirit with his power takes over. And he comes in and helps you do what you need to do. And so at the funeral there, we arrived an hour early. And we were a little bit, you know, weak. And we thought, oh, we're going to have coffee. So we go to a coffee shop and we sat there <laughs> like fish out of water in the rang and we're all dressed up and everything and then all of a sudden we got our coffee and this guy comes over and he had a suit on and he goes oh pierce the dennis and pierce the jane <laughs> we're like okay so he had connected with andrew and he's a pastor from another church on the gold coast and he's a southern american y'all y'all good and so we we said oh you know us, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm coming to do a speech at Andrews because we said, let us invite, you know, the pastor that was close to him the last six months also. So he came and, and isn't it funny because someone said to us, oh, we won't invite him because it's your turf. You're doing the funeral. And we said, no, you invite him because he'd been a part of the life. He's been a part of the journey. And so we sat at this coffee table and, and he was just a delight. 
It's like God just placed him there. He said, and I love the American, some Americans for this. He said, sir, sir, we went, ooh, how long have you been in ministry? And then he said, since 1990, full-time ministry. And he said, I respect you. He said, and I want to get to know you more. He said, can I do life with you? And we're like, okay, who are you? Let me Google you. <laughs> can I do life with you? So we exchanged numbers. And we got up, finished our coffee and we thought we'd better head back. And he goes like this. He was a big fella, quite similar to Jared, but probably a lot bigger. And, you know, he had the hair growing. Not, but he was, he was, you know, big. I, I thought he was like an angel. God sent him there. And he said, sir, I'm going to walk one step behind you and you'll know I'm here. I bought your backs. And we were like, oh, this is cool. All oh, this respect in 15 minutes. Woo-hoo. And he did. We went from the coffee shop all the way to the funeral parlor with him in one step. And it was, we didn't know what to talk about. We were just like, okay. And we got there, and it was just like God had put an extra strength there, a, a, like a covering. And, you know, something that could have been horrible in the natural was absolutely beautiful in the spirit realm. And Paula stood up there, and she presented the reading, and it was just beautiful. Beautiful. And she just delivered what she had to say. And it's like when we are weak, we've got to allow God to come in and take over. Come into that doorway of our heart when we're hurting, when we're sick, when we, we, we feel we've got nothing else. And he comes in like a flood and he protects and he watches over. He'll put someone at your side to watch over you. In the natural too. I believe that. But here's the thing. So many hide what they're going through. And they don't come out and tell. A lot of times in the natural. We don't know someone's hurting. Because in our cultures now. It's weakness. If you let someone know. How you're really doing. And that's a big thing for men. A lot of our men. They hide what they're going through. And they try and walk it alone. Yeah, I know God will bring them through. Because it reads that. And he's a good God. But it's so much better if you're shouldering with people. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for, to help one another. To shoulder with each other. See, when we're weak, he is strong. But he'll give us people who will walk the journey with us. We felt so, I just, I said to Dennis, I said, I think that was an angel. I'll phone him up on Monday and see if he's still around. <laughs> it was just like it was a God job. So he might even come in this church and he might even do a preach for y'all <laughs> one day. But, we saw God turn a tragedy into a triumph. And the Bible speaks of that in 2 Corinthians 2.14. He said, God always makes his grace visible in Christ. This is the message. Who includes us <clears throat> as of his endless triumph. Through our yielded lives, he spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere we go. Some translation says he spreads the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. And in past times, you know, when the move of God was on and the Holy Spirit was moving in a lot of churches, people had a scent, a fragrance of the Holy Spirit on their hands, on their clothes. Who in the room was involved in anything like that? Probably 15 years ago. Linda? Yeah? And so this fragrance, they like reckon it was a heavenly fragrance from the Holy Spirit. And churches was it, and gold dust and different things. Not that I ever experienced the gold dust, but the fragrance of the Holy Spirit 
It was incredible, incredible. So he says that he, he gives us the, um, the fragrance will spread, the knowledge of God everywhere we go. We have become the unmistakable aroma of victory of the anointed ones to God and a perfume of life to those who have been saved and an odour to those who are perishing. That's why sometimes people can't stand your presence. But how, how much more should we be given the fragrance of the Holy Spirit? How much more will he give us the fragrance to partake? Like in that few, there was a heavenly fragrance in that place. Heavenly fragrance. And you know, some people, and this is what, we, we don't really respect in our culture. You know when we got to the graveside, some young kids, they wanted them to unscrew the coffin for them to put things in the coffin. Oh, can you, can you unscrew that while we put this? Have you ever heard of that? Never heard of it in my life. Normally the coffin goes down and then people throw things uh, in and it brings a closure to them. But they just... And you know what? Because it was their closure, the fru funeral parlour did it. We were just sat there like, and they unscrewed, slid it, and these kids put stuff in it. Never heard of it in my life. All the funerals you've been to, it's a new thing. Sad, isn't it? Disrespectful. The mother came to us after and said, I did not know that was going to happen. And that was the one thing that wasn't planned. They may have got closure, but to her it was an offence. Who mattered the most? Their feelings or her feelings? So the Holy Spirit, it gives us a... He, he comes in in our weakness and he makes us strong. And that's what we need. And you, you know in this room there's testimony after testimony after testimony of people who have been at their lowest point and God's come in like a flood. Can I see a hand? Look at that. Can I see more hands? Because you know what? The glory is going to him. Because the very things we go through is so that he can be glorified. Not that he allows it, but he'll work in it. And he'll turn it around for a good. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good for those who love God and call for his purposes. That's us. Is it? That's us. We've got to claim it. Whatever you're going through this morning, it will turn around for good. Because you love God and God loves you. And he wants to do a breakthrough. He wants to open a door that you've never been in before. He wants to open a space where you know, I trust my God. I'll have a testimony for my God. Not for my friends, not for myself, but I'll have a testimony that proves the living God still reigns today. Can we say amen? Amen. Because I tell you, we've got a world that's on so much medication and so much other stuff and they're looking for answers everywhere. They're not going to get it. You know, I spoke to a woman this week and she's been quite sick. And so they say, oh, your sugar's off. So they put her on sugar medication. And then a few months later they say, your blood pressure's not good. So they put her on blood pressure medication. A few months later they said, your cholesterol's not good. So they put her on cholesterol medication. By this time now, she was beside herself. Beside herself. Didn't know what to do. Anyway, she got into prayer and God said, she felt the Lord said to her, go natural. So she went to a naturopath. And they, took, they said, you should not. Now, some of you in the room may be. 
But this naturopath said no one should be on cholesterol medication more than three months. Have you ever heard that? Never heard it. But she should not have been on that medication more than three months. So she took her off. And she took her off the sugar medication. And then she took her off the cholesterol, med uh, blood pressure medication. And she's gone all natural. She started to lose weight the proper way because she needed to. She was a bit overweight. Started to lose weight and she said, you know, I've never felt so good in a long time. A long now, I'm not saying go off your medication. I'm saying you've got to work that out with God. She worked it out with God because she had come to that place where she was weak and she needed a breakthrough. She needed a God job. And I'm telling you this morning, if you're feeling weak, God will be your strength no matter what you're going through. Amen? He will open a door. And I'll tell you this now. If you're living in fear, it's not of God. It is not of God. God is not... Fear is defined by torment. It's a tormenting spirit. It is not of God. Anxiousness and stress, not of God. My Bible says God gives us a perfect peace. A perfect peace that transcends all our understanding. Because why? Because his ways are bigger. His thoughts are higher. His thoughts are better. He's a good God and we put him in this box and we say, oh, he's not doing it. He will do it. He will come through for you. He will give you a peace that surpasses all your understanding. And he'll open a door. He'll open a portal that you come to a new place in him if we trust him with all our heart. Amen? I'm not milking that amen. I'm just saying, like, do you agree or not? Of course we agree. We're kingdom people. And that's what we do. Or should do. Can I have the team up? I think I've said enough. But I know this morning, I came this morning and I thought, God wants to do some healing. God wants to do some deeper work. And I think we've just got to create the space, allow our hearts sat with someone this week and I'm listening to them and they're talking about a spirit of fear and they're, they're talking about demonic activities. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm, my heart was saddened. I'm just like, that should never be because God is greater. He's greater than all of that. And it's tapping into that. He is greater. Nothing that can come to us in this realm can, can be bigger than God if we believe and if we position ourselves where we, we, Lord, I'm weak. I need your strength. I can't do this. And he opens a door and he comes in like a flood. And he gives you a new testimony. He gives you a new tune. Because that's who he is. It's who he is. The team are going to sing that um, in the crushing. New wine in the crushing. <laughs> That's a good advertisement. New wine. Because when you're feeling crushed, like I said, he comes in and he gives you a new wine. It's for you. It's for me. It's for all of us. We just have to push in. Here I am. I'm so weak, God. I can't do this anymore. I've done the dash. I'm going to ask you this morning. If you're at the end of your tether and you need to pray, that means at the end of yourself. If, you, if you're over anxious, if you're living in fear, if you're thinking there's no way, there's no end to this. Church, there is an end to it. It's when we position and when we ask, I'm weak, God, I can't do it. It'll open. It'll open something more for us. Can we stand?